David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes tales of TV that have rarely been revealed until now. Today, Gilligan's Island creator Sherwood Schwartz will talk about great Gilligan's Island guest stars, including Zsa Zsa Gabor, Don Rickles, Phil Silvers, Hans Conried, and a prepubescent Kurt Russell. Schwartz talks about aging, and we talked about his legacy. Also, what did Sherwood Schwartz, creator of Gilligan's Island, think of Lost? Lost was airing when we actually did this interview. We also start talking about the Brady Bunch and why Sherwood Schwartz feels that Brady Bunch and Gilligan's Island are pretty much the same show. And we'll reveal the true three-in-the-morning origin of Gilligan's Island. Plus, Schwartz confesses his real feelings about networks. Well, the show had a number of great guest stars on it. Considering that they were on this island all by themselves, the number of people who came to visit them was unbelievable. You mentioned Phil Silvers earlier. It's amazing how many people found their way onto this island and then got off. And this was a big problem every, every episode. There had to be an excuse why they didn't release this information to the outside world. Why? In the case of Phil Silvers, he was planning to use the device that we did on the island for his own purposes when he got back to Hollywood. He was going to do Hamlet, set the music, which we did on the island. So he couldn't tell people where he got the idea. And then uh, Kurt Russell was one of the guest stars, and he just played a kid. That, which is what he was at the time. He was, I think, 14. He's gone on to do a few few things. In his, two things. Yes. And uh, I'm just trying to think. Now, Hans Conried, who played Wrong Way Feldman, who didn't know where he was ever. That's why he couldn't release the information he to the outside world. That's right. We had a number of fantastic things happen. Zsa Zsa Gabor, Don Rickles. Zsa Zsa Gabor, Don Rickles were among the, the, the guest stars, but there, there's a, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other, Don Rickles, yeah. I noticed Henny Backus, was that Jim Backus's wife? Jim Backus's wife played a native chief's uh, wife in, in one of the episodes. And she, bless her heart, just passed away this past year. So people are passing away. And uh, why you look at me that closely? <laughs> no reason. Nothing. Nothing. The trouble with with life is you age as you go along. That's, you know, somebody's got to do something about that. Yeah. Well, I could have if I became a doctor. You see, but instead, I went on to write these funny things. Well, all those people who are on those shows will be young forever, though, because of you. That's absolutely true. That's the great thing about being an actor and actress. Or even in my own way, you know, I, I will, my name will be along for a long time after I'm gone, which is good. I think I've left kind of a legacy. Well, you yeah. have. I mean, you, you certainly uh, completely warped my view of the world as I was growing up. <laughs> I have, in a good way. Uh, I have, I have warped a lot of, te- I get, most of the letters I get, I get a lot of fan mail. And I don't know how many of them start out the same way, saying, I don't know how I could have lived through my teenage years without your shows. I used to come running home from school to see Gilligan's Island and also the Brady Bunch. They were very often paired, one one after another. And they would say, that saved me in high school. The knowledge that there's an outside world that that I could like. Because teenagers are troubled very often. And if they find some solace in in people that, that are friends of theirs, Gave people some really good friends. I have a quick question before we move on to Brady Bunch. Have you seen Lost? Have yes. Have you watched Lost at all? What do you think? Of, what is Sherwood Schwartz, creator of Gilligan's Island, think of Lost? Well, uh, when that show, oh, we, we're not on the air now. We are. Do you want me oh, to we are? Uh, yes, I, oh, I don't care. No, it's, it's our, I just okay. want to know how to approach what I'm going to say. We are, we are running, but you can take your time. We'll, we'll be editing this so we can tweak it if you'd like. When Lost came on the air, uh, I guess it was two years ago, I don't know how many phone calls I received asking me, when is a lawsuit? Aren't you going to sue those people? And I said, for what? What do I have to sue them about? Uh, Anybody can take a group of people. None of the characters resemble my characters. Uh, If you want to do a show with other characters on an island, I I, I can't copyright that idea. That's not an idea. 
you have to have more than that. And I res did not resent the show, and it's very successful, and I've watched it. I watched it last night, as a matter of fact. Did you get it? I didn't understand it, the last episode. I didn't watch the whole thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but you liked the show? Yeah. It's a very dramatic show. There's nothing like Gilligan's Island at all. I keep expecting them to run into Bob Denver at some point. <laughs> Maybe in some bigger island where they can all meet. I think at the end of the Mad Magazine parody, they, they run into, they run into the Gilligan's Island. That's an idea. Um, let's talk about the Brady Bunch, if you don't mind. I know. Uh, Not at all. I would like to stop just for a moment. Have right? some water, sure. Let's talk about the Brady Bunch. Where did that concept come to you from? The Brady Bunch and Gilligan's Island seem to be mutually self-exclusive. They don't seem to be like each other at all. But they're the same show. They're exactly the same show. I'm consumed as a creative person and as a person in this world with the importance of learning to get along with your neighbors. I think that North Korea and South Korea have to learn that. The Israelis in the, uh, in the Middle East have to learn that with their neighbors because we only have one world. See, Gilligan's Island is really a very serious subject. The basis of it is serious. How do seven disparate people learn to live together? And I was battling with that idea, trying to find a way. When people work in the same building or they they're in the same school or whatever they are, at night they go away. How could I force a group of people unless one night, about three in the morning, I woke up and I said, an island that they can't get off. That's the only way I could imagine that seven or eight, or how, I, at that point I didn't know how many, but a group of people who were forced to live together had to learn to get along with each other or they'd kill each other. And I was so excited with that idea. I said to my wife, I woke her up three in the morning. I said, honey, I've got this idea. An island will solve my problems. And she said, Go to sleep. <laughs> that was her assessment of this idea. But I didn't go to sleep. I love her anyway. <laughs> she probably loves you too. I mean, you made a nice living off of, uh, off of that little idea. Well, it's more than just a living. She loves me. And loving and living are two different things. And so we do both. We live and we love. And that's great. But she was... I guess annoyed that I woke her up in the middle of the night to tell her something which she wasn't even worried about. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's, that's what I, that was the beginning of the battle that I started and went to the mat with CBS and with United Artists and just to preserve that idea. Because people, one of the worst things about being a writer is getting a great idea and then having a bunch of people telling you how to do it better people who don't even know what your intentions are. And they go by certain rules. And they go by past rules. Nobody had ever done, they said to me, nobody had ever done the same place, location, with the same seven people. That's crazy. Nobody's ever done that. Well, it's not crazy. It's just different. And when I did uh, the Brady Bunch, there's two different families that I put, I put them together because I think that's part of what I was talking about before. Did the network give you any trouble with the whole two different families and the divorce days thing? Did they give you any? I never had trouble with the network about the idea of, Gilla, of the Brady Bunch. Uh, I had different trouble there with, uh, this, is, this is what drives writers crazy, if you want to know. And I think you do want to know because you're asking me these questions. Right. 
Yes. That's it for now on our next thrill-packed episode. Sherwood Schwartz and I talk about The Brady Bunch, the story of two families coming together. He talks about his original pitch to the network and how afraid they were of the concept, why he turned down CBS and NBC and ABC to do the show, plus the invention of the opening theme checkerboard. And I asked him, how do you cast six kids? You'll learn how many kids were up for the part and the secret of the alternate universe Brady kids. Till then, what was your favorite Brady Bunch episode? Let me know in the comments. I will see you next time.